Hello folks, and welcome to a brand new series that I'm starting today, Let's Learn Dwarf Fortress. Now, this is a little different from my other normal playthroughs, my Let's Play series, or my other types of series. This is a series about teaching you how to play Dwarf Fortress. Now, I'm a huge fan of games that are open-ended building games, simulation games. Probably the most famous one of those that you've played is Minecraft, right? Minecraft, you start out in the world, you start to build things, there's simulations, mods add in things, and you just try to survive, and there's really no goals other than what you set. You can go kill the Ender Dragon, or maybe build a castle, but that's your decision. Dwarf Fortress is sort of a game like that, except a much more brutal version. I don't mean brutal like in an ugly way. I mean like brutal is in, it's a hard game. You can play as either a dwarf colony or as an individual adventurer adrift in a huge world full of fantastical things, but also very dangerous things. Um, I love this game a lot. I actually play this game a lot, um, but it's, it's kind of a single player game. And I've hesitated to do single-player games on my YouTube before. Also, a lot of people find Dwarf Fortress kind of an intimidating game to play. And it is intimidating. It's a tough game to play. It doesn't teach you a lot of things. You know, if you don't have, like, a someone to help you out, like a mentor, it can be challenging to get into it. So I'm hoping that maybe these videos can help some of the audience on my YouTube channel, many of whom know me best for my Minecraft work, see that also Dwarf Fortress is a fun game to play and it'll give you lots of stories to tell your friends. Now... Before you get started, the first thing you should know is that Dwarf Fortress, there's lots of different versions. There's mods just like Minecraft, or even mod packs just like Minecraft. But we're not going to be using any sort of modded thing to start, to learn. Because trust me, the game's plenty complicated without that. What we're going to be running is the DF Starter Pack, you can see here. Um, I will put a link to this in the description. So if you just look down in the description of the video, you will find a link to this. There are Mac and Linux versions if you are on those platforms. I am obviously doing this with Windows. We are going to be having lots of different windows on the screen. So that's why you're seeing my whole desktop, my super board. This is my normal desktop, not <laughs> at all. Like, I, this is completely blank. Just because I don't have, you know, I'm, I'm going to be, you know, running ads in these videos probably. I don't want to... Uh, necessarily, uh, you know, uh, put up ads on content that isn't mine. So I'm just going to use this nice blank screen. The game will be the feature. Now, the DF Starter Pack, when you run this here, I'll close it, and then you can see we release this little launcher thing. And that's really all you need. And this will tell you basically all the things you need to know about the, how the game's being set up. Now, before we start playing, I strongly recommend that you go over here and make sure that performance tweaks and pure bug fixes are clicked in the DF Hack panel. Uh, I am going to turn off Sound Sense here and Dwarf Therapist. I'm going to leave all these off just because I'll turn them on later. But um, I would normally leave Sound Sense and Dwarf Therapist on. So you can go ahead and make sure those are on. Later on, if you want to come through, you can always run the program by highlighting it and clicking the Run Program button. So this window will be useful later on. The Graphics tab lets you set other tile sets. By default, this game has very primitive graphics. Even though it uses OpenGL and actually has a pretty powerful rendering engine, it uses very primitive graphics. Modders have fixed that by adding in all sorts of things, and we are going to be using the Iron Hand set. Now, you can use whichever one you want. I encourage you to experiment because they all look a little different, and they all have their strengths and weaknesses. Um, and you can change them even after you start a game, so you can just change it and see how it is. But my personal favorite out of this bunch is Iron Hand. That's what I'm using. For the settings, you can leave it on the default. It's really fine. Now... Uh, before we get started, you know, you can just uh, kind of copy these. I'm just going to go through these. Once again, all this stuff is default, and you should be fine with it. You may just want to tweak graphics. You probably just want to tweak utilities. Uh, and you definitely want to make sure that these two things are checked. And you can add other things when you're more proficient. So let's go ahead then, and we would click Play Dwarf Fortress, and it should come right up. All right. Uh, so this is the Dwarf Fortress window. Uh, you can set this to be full screen, and I recommend that you do that. However, I am not going to do it because I'm going to be switching back and forth between things. Um, I have a bunch of save games that I could go and play. Uh, we played this one. Um, uh, was it Vabu Kekobon? Vabu Kekobon, I think is how you pronounce it. Uh, in Kolobath 177. Um, that, that's something I did on the live stream getting ready for it. And I actually really like that map, so I'm not getting rid of it. But um, what you should do is say, create a new world. Now, Dwarf Fortress, every time you start a game, there's a couple different game modes, but they all start with you making a world. Now, this world is not just like Minecraft where it generates it off a seed. You actually have to pick the properties of the world. We're going to go for a short history because we want this to go pretty fast. I don't want to sit here talking forever. Uh, but I would recommend going for a medium history. I wouldn't recommend going for a long one. A short one will still take a while. 
Um, other than that, everything else can be less sort of normal. I wouldn't recommend making the world small, it may, especially with everything else at medium. It makes things a little bit crazy. We press Y to go, and this is the map we're generating. Now, don't worry. The graphics will get better a little bit later on, but this is initial spot. It's just this, and this is this beautiful uh, ASCII map. It reminds me of all the games I used to play when I was a kid back when this was all the graphics we had. So get off my lawn, kids. But uh, you can see these little triangles that are... Um, all sorts of interesting things, and now the world's going to shift around a little bit as various various actions are occurring. We're now generating history. Now, what that means, you'll notice there's these little roads around here where my cursor is that are coming together. You'll see all these interesting looking little things that are actually fortresses. Um, you can see civilizations developing. It's simulating a full fantasy scenario. Now, you'll notice these uh, purple things here in the middle of the screen over here. These are evil civilizations. Now, these are necromancers and goblins and all sorts of crazy things, and their evil will begin to spread as well. With modded versions, you'll even get things like warlocks and succubi and, and incubi and all sorts of crazy things. But um, we have this sort of world growing. Now, you can over see over here in the lower left island of the world, lower left kind of uh, is it isthmus and then continent, you can see all sorts of interesting things occurring. There's a beautiful, thriving civilization here that's probably human, given the way that it's building. Humans love to build like this. It's not a dwarfy thing. Connected to a large evil area with a tower. A small little desert separates everything, and then there's a lonely mountain sitting in the middle of a huge thing. And uh, there's looks to be a dwarven civilization or an elven... No, yeah, it could be an elven civilization over here. I'm not sure. Um, and we're just going to keep generating this world. All sorts of crazy things are happening. Now, while you don't see it here just yet, um, the uh, Obesient Barbs is the name of this world. The Dwarven Mountain Halls of Kolkarit, the Obesient Barbs. Um, this is all the Ocean of Groups, all sorts of things is happening. Um, all sorts of amazing things are occurring. And we have 125 years of history. I think that we're going to um, uh, go ahead and accept this for now. Now, um, so we have made this world and we're going to save it. What's actually just happened is we have a world with realistic geometry. We have a world with realistic weather patterns, humidity. Uh, for example, there's prevailing winds and weather. And so on one side of mountains, there will be a lush forest. And on the other side, there'll be a desert, just like in real life, because the game is actually modeling weather like that, not just over a day or two, but over the course of history. So all we have to do is just go ahead and get it to save, and it saves, and now we have um, something where we can go ahead and start playing. Now this is um, Region 3, uh, Defini Ametha. This is our new world. Before we start with the actual Dwarf Fortress mode, I just want to talk about the game modes. There's Dwarf Fortress, where you have a bunch of dwarves and you make a fortress. Very fun. Adventurer mode, where you play a lone person, perhaps of demigod-like status, wandering around the world having adventures. It's a little bit more raw and difficult than Dwarf Fortress, which, as hard as it is, is still a very guided experience. Adventurer just cuts you loose in the world unless you find things. But we're going to start with Legends. And we're going to load up the world and just kind of take a look at what this history looks like. Because I don't think people really understand how amazingly detailed the history of the worlds you have is. If you want a story, this is the place for the story. So let's go ahead and just find something interesting. For example, um, let's look in the Second Age of Myth. And we can see a complete history here. The elf uh, Alisa Lilac Swelters became a druid of the Fair Pelts. All sorts of things are happening here. Right uh, in midsummer of 118, Gustavus, the violent assaults occur. There's wars. There's pillagings. There's sackings. There's alliances. There's assassinations. There's slaves. There's there's uh, social policies being enacted. Um, you can see, for example, the human Anri de Dances became the lord of the stable brand. You can see just so many things happening here. Right. Let's hop back out and look at an individual person, so historical figure. And let's just find, you can see a bunch of them here. Some of them are still alive and some of them have deceased. You can see the ones listed as deceased. Um, so let's see, uh, how about, can we find an elf? So here we have, well this is actually, uh, it looks like it found female and elf. Um, but here we have female dwarf. Let's see about Meng Tefekud, Meng Most Glazes and her story, because she is someone of great importance. Um, so it appears that she is a, um, a settler in a dwarven fortress. Uh, in one, uh, she was born 
in 101 um, and settled in Long Whipped, a dwarven fortress. She married, stopped being a carpenter, uh, settled in a new fortress, and then became the sheriff of that group. And has all sorts of things. So, like, this is a relatively mundane legend, but she's become an important person who's not dead yet. If we were to go in adventure mode to this place, which we could, then we would actually find this person. And we would find that they are around and doing whatever this says they're doing. Let's see if we can find um, something more interesting. So let's go up to the top, historical figures. Uh, uh, let's find a story about perhaps a... Um, look at this female dragon has perished. You can see uh, uh, Ebok, the female dragon, has been striking down humans, striking down... Um, uh, you know, tearing off arms, stealing treasure... Um, making enemies, a wolverine bone scepter was stolen from Basement Joyous by Ebok. All these amazing little things that have just been occurring, right? Eventually, how did Ebok meet their doom? So we go down here. In 113, Ebok was struck down by the dwarf Alan Inkwins in the Halls of Flame. So you can see in 113, this dragon met her end, uh, attempting to raid the, uh, um, uh, the Halls of Flying. And Alban Inkwins confronted and we could actually find the story of Abbott Inkwins, the Dragon Slayer, and all sorts of amazing things. But you can see basically that we have a ton of detail. Now, there are tools to help you browse through this because this interface is pretty tough to use. And I'll show those in an upcoming episode. And in fact, I'm going to look through and I'm going to find some interesting figures. And I'm going to try and sit down and have a story time hour. Uh, maybe put up some nice pictures of a fire. And uh, for, no, for Thanksgiving, I think I'll try and have a story time hour. But... Um, I think that that's probably enough to start. In the next episode, we're going to start playing Dwarf Fortress. So we've created a world, we've looked at the legends, and now we're actually going to start playing. And I'm going to show you with this lazy noob pack, as they call it, how easy it is to start and what are the things you should do. Uh, we'll also talk a little bit about the keybinds that we'll be using the whole way.